Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, it's your boy Beaky back with another 4K Legends video and today we have a community deck build. In this video we're going to incorporate everybody who's on the Bethesda forums, Reddit, YouTube, even Twitter, anybody who plays Legends and wants to participate, please feel free to join in what we're about to do today. We're going to come all together and try to build that perfect a fine version of a deck. So what you guys are about to see right now, and the reason this video is in 4K, is because there's going to be a lot of different windows showing a lot of different information. And I'm just going to have to explain the basis of how this is going to work for the future, and then we'll go into why the deck the way it is built the way it is, and the cards that are in it, and how you guys can participate. So let's go over into the next window, you guys will see the madness. So yes guys, I know there's a lot going on, but just chill with me and I'll try to explain. Above my head right up there, that is a small window showing my win and loss ratio with the base deck that I put together right now is called Stellar of Secret Text Mage because those are two of the main cards that are combined together to make this deck work. It's featuring some new cards from the new expansion for the Brotherhood. So this is the deck right over here real quick and the deck is also available on Legends-Deck. If you guys just want to not watch the video and just build it and try it for yourself, you go ahead and do that. And in the top right hand corners up here, there are going to be two examples of the deck actually in action and rank and me actually using the deck. I know those are really small but let's get into what this is all about guys if you guys actually because make the video full screen you will notice that a lot of the cards in this deck are only have two I only have two copies of them in the deck and the reason for that is I wanted to put a deck together that was playable in rank and was playable in casual and could win the more than it lose, so I have a majority of wins compared to loss, but it needs to be refined. This is where you guys come in. You guys are going to take this deck, go into Legends, go on Legends deck, or go into the comments on Reddit, go on Twitter, on the Bethesda forums, wherever I post this at, and you guys need to tell me, how would you structure this deck? Which cards would you use three of? What would you guys try to accomplish with a deck like this? Now, I'm just going to give you guys my basis idea of what I want to do with this deck, and then you guys go ahead and tell me how you would approve it and make this deck really refined and that's what I want to do with these community videos give you guys my idea of a deck that I think legitimately has been working for me and it's very fun to play but obviously can be touched up to that a little bit next notch and I like decks like this because they're so diverse and different different strategies that anybody who starts starting to play the game might have a better chance of making something like this because it doesn't feature three copies of every legend or something that's crazy hard to craft so let's get into what I'm doing here all right so if you guys are watching the videos up there, there's a lot of different strategies. So we're going to start off with Cruel Fire Bloom. Cruel Fire Bloom is in here to combo with a bunch of other cards. Off the bat, uh, Spire Master, which is only one of them in this um, deck. But we'll get to that later on. Goblin Skull. The Goblin is here to grab all these zero-cost items. So we got Cruel Fire Bloom, the Dagger in the Dark, and the Lesser Ward. Dagger in the Dark is one of the new cards, so you're going to have to play through the Fall of the Brotherhood expansion. And I'm giving away a code for that very soon. So make sure you guys go into the description. There's a Gleam link down there enter it i think there's seven hours left and there's gonna be a code given away for that we got firebolt that's a standard in a deck like this because in this deck there is 23 creatures 25 actions two supports and there's 40 of the cards are intelligence card and that's very important when you're playing with something like cunning ally meaning not more than often you're gonna get your color cunning ally effect to activate and give you that extra draw of a firebolt We've got Shadow Swift. We have two of these. It's another way to draw cards and move creatures from lane to lane because this is a very rush-heavy deck. You're going to be winning usually by turn 6, if not latest, by turn 9. And if it gets that late turn 9, you're going to have Supreme or right here the Pack Master to finish off the game. And that's the reason for them to there. And the reason why there's 25 actions, you guys will know here, she is the, the main star of the game. Um, Stellar of Secrets. She gets powered up every single time a action is in your discard pile and with 25 actions more actions than monsters in this deck you're gonna have a lot of chance to power her up by turn six with a majority of your cards actually actions actually being zero cost and you're gonna be able to get them with the goblin you're gonna have a lot of actions being used by turn six so by turn six i've gotten her to six six or even more than that at that point and obviously we have the support cards we have one of my probably one of my favorite supports in the game so far by incorporating this on the field when she gets summoned she's going to obviously automatically get an item and every other monster that you summon right away is going to get an item as well 
Now, I'm going to talk about the disadvantages of this deck and the way it is, because there are definitely disadvantages to this. But let's keep on going. Shrieking Harpy is a prophecy card. Obviously, it's a simple card to understand. But having this on the field and having it in your deck, it's a great way to just stall the game for a little bit so you can last a little longer if you're playing against a, let's say, a warrior-type deck where they're really trying to rush you really quickly. So this may help you stall things out for, a, for just for, even for one turn. It might really help you out to make a comeback. And um, with cards like this in the deck as well, it combos really well with the ship because that's going to make um, Shrieking Harpy get one more attack, which could be the game changer. Of, by having three this early in the game, it might really help you out. Split, uh, Soul Split, once again, that combos really well with the ship. Once again, with only two of them in the deck, you could put three. This is what I'm talking about. What would you guys do? Would you prefer to have three cruise ships in the deck and then take out something like Spy Master? This is where you guys are going to come in and tell me what you guys want to do in this community type of deck. So right there, once again, Soul Split up a lot of these creatures. Soul Split stuff like um, Spy Master. And then now with the ship on the playing field, you're going to be able to get a sword on each one of them. Um, the hero is simple. You're, this is a mostly a rush deck. It's just a rush deck with a lot of different ways to play. But you're going to want to attack as much as possible, as quick as possible. You're not going to really wait and care if your opponents have prophecy 90%. I'm just going for it. I'm going for the win as quick as possible. That's how I'm running this deck so far. And it's been working out fairly well for that. Because the lower you get your opponent's health, the more chances you have winning. Especially when you have stuff like two copies of Crushing Blow. Maybe you guys want to go up to three copies of Crushing Blow and remove something else. Uh, three copies of Lightning Bolts, which are prophecy. If the lower you get your opponent's health, the more chance you have to use those Lightning Bolts in a row and take out your opponent. Or if you get your opponent's health low enough, that's where Supreme could come in and win you the game by summoning those creatures on both lanes. Or even the Pack Master. If you get their health low enough, quick enough, by the ninth turn, you get to play this and you're going to be able to go really quickly and going for that win. Now, moving on from that, we already talked about Cunning Ally, and then we got Daggerfell Mage. And you might be thinking I'm using this to get that Tome of Alteration, but yes, Tome of Alteration is a great card, but it's not something you're going to be playing this deck for. But if you want to incorporate a different type of strategy in this by actually incorporating something like right here, Gardner's Sword, because Gardner's Sword does combo really well with the ship right here. So if you want to combo Gardner's Sword with a Dragfall Mage, Dagger fell mage. You can do it for me. I have this card in there in the situation that it has ward. It's an easy card to put out. My opponent always tries to focus on getting rid of this card. And I like that my opponent will use stuff like silence on dagger fall mage because the other key card in this deck is Hex Mage. That's why it's in the title, Hex. Because with 25 actions in this deck, Hex Mage is one of those other cards that's really going to help you out winning later in the game. That's what I'm saying. Early game, you're going to want to hit your opponent as much as possible so that by the time you get Hex Mage on the field and then you start using some of these zero-cost actions, you're going to be doing a whole lot of extra damage with even one or two Hex Mages out. And then let's say you come out to your um, sixth turn, you get her out with the Ward. Very powerful card very early on. Or or let's say if you need to wipe the field, you got Ice Storm in there. I rock two of these. I felt I really needed something that could clear the board. Like, that's just something I felt I needed. Yes, Fire Firebolt. Yes, Crushing Blow. Like, those are great. But sometimes you just need to clear the board and start over. And with this deck, you could build up your creatures fast enough by using stuff like Soul Split. And I haven't really ran into a situation that I just felt like I was getting all actions consistently. Even with much actions in this deck. I felt like I've been fairly lucky in getting actions when I need it and creatures when I need it as well. Um, obviously, the next big card in this deck is Smuggler Hall. Smuggler Hall, once again, combos really well with cards like Hex Mage and combos well with her right here. Powering her up, every single card, when well, those cards are in the discard pile and she gets summoned. And these two cards I've already talked about before. So this is what the basics of the deck is right here, guys. Only card I really didn't talk about right here is the Queen. And the Queen is just a, a really powerful card. Once again, that's going to be the attention of all your opponents. That's going to be using stuff like Shadow Priestess and things that eliminate your freaking monsters abilities with silence so i would prefer my opponent to use all their silences on stuff like dagger fell mage and the queen before they use it on something like hex mage or even supreme or her so that's what i'm trying to say you want to have creatures in there that are just consider bait that's what i like to call them. i like to have bait cards where like yes that card is so powerful it's such a legendary it's such a good card that your opponent's gonna be focusing like i'm gonna get rid of that card i'm gonna get rid of that dagger felt mage i'm gonna make sure you can't use that damn ability and get that tome of alteration for me i'm like okay you got rid of it but i get to you got to silence it but i get to keep the monster that's one less silence you have in your deck so once i get something like hex mage on the field now you might have to use a pearson javelin might be have to use a lightning bolt you're gonna have to use something else to try to get rid of that creature so that's what i've been thinking of but 
like I said, guys, you see the win ratio for yourselves. It's not horrible. It's not the best ever. But there is refinements to have to a deck like this. But for me, I think the core to this deck is actually having these zero-cost actions in the deck. Having the Goblin. Having Hex Mage. And having Secrets. I think those are the cards that need to stay in the deck for everything else to work. Now, what you guys want to add or remove to make this really even better, that's what I would like to know. Which cards would you bump up to have three of, and which cards would you completely eliminate? I definitely see some of you guys eliminating the Spy Master because that's too random. It's worked out for me, and I kind of just, you guys know me, I kind of want those players who like the lows. I want to see what card I'm going to get for Spy Master. Every time it transforms into something else, I'm like, yeah, let's, let's see what happens when it dies. Um, Ice Spike, I didn't talk about this much, but this is just simple. It's an easy way to get draw, use it with Hex Mage, you draw and you do damage at the same exact time. It can win you the game, but it's one of those early level cards like, hey, if you get it in your hand, you could keep it and you could go ahead and get yourself uh, another card while doing damage. It's just fun to have that in there. Um, yeah, guys, so there you go. That's everything in there. I would love to know how you guys would work this out and actually change it up because this is, is a community deck, like I said, guys. And I'm going to have full videos that you guys could see of me playing this deck and show you guys to see how it's worked out in different scenarios. So I've played a bunch of ranked matches, a bunch of freaking casual matches, and a lot of this stuff all incorporates in different ways. Like I said, there's lots of different cards in here. There's a lot of different ways to win, but the general strategy is to use as many actions as you possibly can, and as much as you can, attack. Obviously, this deck is going to be completely weak against stuff like Cultus. Cultus is going to screw you. So if Cultus is on the field, you need to get rid of that card as fast as possible. So that's going to be really dangerous for you guys to deal with Cultus. Another card that's going to really ruin your day. Uh, for me, I know these guys may not think it, but for me, Imperial Might and Divine Favor, I've, I've fought, fought some people with that before, and be, if my opponent gets to pump out creatures consistently, that could really mess up a strategy like this, but if you're by, if it's turn six already and you have a strategy set up, it might be, you were going to lose that anyways, but and there's no also, as you guys are clear, see, much situations where you're going to be guarding. This is not a deck about guarding. You're going to be removing your opponent's creature. There is literally no guards in this deck. The only way you could get a guard is by doing usually this combo, which I like to do if you need a guard. I could play out Daggerfall Mage, and then I could play the Queen, which makes him, make her Daggerfall Mage into a ward guard creature. So that's one of the few ways you could get a guard if you actually need it. But you're going to be so much more focused on removal. So what would you guys add or remove to this deck? Let me know. Some of you guys might use Curse as one of the zero cost uh, cards. Maybe some of you guys would use three goblins. I thought I tried three, but I really felt like two was enough because we were going to draw some of these anyways. And I don't need to be powering myself over with zero cost cards. Yes, they're helpful, but that's not the strategy I'm going for. If that's the strategy you're going for, you guys might want to incorporate something like uh, right over here. Swindler's Market. Maybe you guys want to incorporate this with a Swindler's Market deck and actually completely remove something like the cruise ship. But I think the cruise ship has been working out for me because the cruise ship, remember, it gives you a creature and it gives you an item. So I think that's really cool when it goes into play like that. So this is Biki with the Untitled Game Show showcasing for you guys right there a brand new community deck. Let me know if you guys would love to try this out for yourself and what would you add, take away, or is it a completely just horrible deck? Do you think that my wins are just a fluke? Like, do you think like all those wins I have right here are just absolutely a fluke? Where is it? Let me make it to the front. So do you think all that was flukes or what? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below or on Reddit or on the forums. Till next time, peace the heck out. Out. Thanks for watching. More 4K videos for Legends coming real soon. Later.